Tech YouTube Stir Read at? This one's the DNH Canal Trail. I think they were saying something about gravity railroads being over here. Now it's a trail that I can talk to you about said book turning pro. Wind leaves proness. One of the best books I've ever read. I've read it pretty fast. Fastest book I ever read. I read it in like a week. There it is. There's the canal. All these big wigs coming up and down. This book is filled with a lot of knowledge that this 75-year-old uh, man has come through and now he wants to teach you. Similar to a war on art. You can see D-Man's review of it over there. And War of Art was more analytical. This one kind of brought more of the personal in. He told us his whole life type of stuff. Professional YouTuber didn't bring an extra battery. I related to a lot of the points in the book. I'm like, yeah, just like me. Oh yeah, that that did it. He, he talks a lot about the shadow, shadow everything. Shadow emotions, shadow career, shadow life. Kind of really Jung-esque. You know, there's a positive emotion and there's a negative emotion to every emotion. There's lust and then there's love. You know, like this will make me feel good in the moment. Like, getting drunk will make me feel good in the moment. Having sex will make me feel good in the moment. Now, it's a lusty sex, so it's not like I'm really gaining anything. We're not making each other better people. We're just having sex for the moment. It's a waste of time, really, in my eyes. I mean, if it's not making me a better person, I'm not gaining anything from it. It's a waste of time. He talks about addicts being their own type of... Creating their own stories. And instead of the story being in a book that they're writing, the story is of their life, of all the drama that it creates. And with addicts, they go for the short-term, the short-term pleasure, the drug. It's always amateur and pro. Same way as in War of Art, amateurs do things one way, pros do things another way. I believe that every chemical that these drugs pull out already exists and you can access them through a positive way if you put in the work. And that's the way a professional would do it sitting down at the chair, actually doing the work, knocking your head against the wall. Everybody's working for the weekend. So we're just hating our lives for five days of the week and then living, living life the, the greatest for two days a week. I don't think that's, how does it make any sense? I would at least like a positive percentage in my favor. You're in a shell and the body puts you in that shell. Your body is protecting you. Your body is an amazing thing. Your body really does care about you. And depression, deep rest, all these chemicals, ways to make you happy in the moment. Addictions are, are good in a way until you figure out what it is or how it is to get it in a positive way. I think you should need nothing, no additive in your life to make you happy on a baseline. If you wanna do them as a cherry on top, that's perfectly fine. But don't do them to run away from something. Don't do them to feel happy or run away from your life situations. My life sucks. Let me uh, get away from it. Let me avoid it with video games or TV or whatever. Because it's never going to go away. So deal with it. Turn pro. And that's the thing. We are just so afraid to be ourselves. But if we fail being ourselves, that is a fake self, a shadow career. You know, if I fail stocking shelves or if I fail doing something I hate guess what I don't care because I didn't want to do it in the first place but if I'm actual me I put the actual me out there and people hate me that's gonna hurt so much more which is just even more the reason you shouldn't care what people think I mean that doesn't mean you shouldn't take constructive criticism because you should you shouldn't be a egotistical arrogant guy that thinks everything's great this used to be the canal right here Wow. And this is the trail. It goes on for a mile. That's the makeup factory I used to work at. Boats used to come through here and all. Now trees are just chilling out. I can't, I can't read you the whole book here. But I'm just giving you like the cliff notes, the good bits, at least the bits that jumped out at me. What we get when we turn pro is we find power. We find our will and our voice and we find our self-respect. We become who we always were but had until then been afraid to embrace. You're not entitled to any of the rewards. You're entitled to the work. Uh, Krishna said that from the old Buddhistness. And here too, if you think about it at a base level, you're already lucky to be alive. In America and white. I mean, that's like luck on top of luck, winning the lottery five times in a row. 400 million to one chances you become a human. So you already won the lottery. So start from a place of gratitude. Appreciate the things you have, gratitude, patience, 
appreciation, persistence, all the other P words that that dude from Spain was talking about. He named a couple of, couple of good ones. You gotta have faith in yourself. I think I watched that commencement speech with Jim Carrey on it and he says you gotta have, not hope, because hope's a beggar. Faith, you gotta have faith in yourself. If nothing else, if you don't believe in any gods or nothing like that, you gotta have faith in yourself. You gotta believe that whatever your dream is, it can come true. And it can come true. It's not like we're treading old ter we're treading new territory here. People have done it. Whatever your dream is, I guarantee somebody's done it. Unless nobody has done it. And you're really a renegade. I'm not. How many YouTubers are there? I think there's like a thousand people. More than a thousand people that have a million subscribers. Looks like a log cabin of some sort. Old telephone lines here. Old school type of stuff. How old do you think those are? If my dream is to travel the world and I'm stuck here for years, I get depressed. Same way I did in Connecticut. Same way I do anywhere else. If I'm not following my dream, I get super depressed. And I know I'm fucking myself over. My body knows. Because I'm living a false life. I mean, you could take living a false life, take a pill every day. But what's that do for you? I mean, you're just... Enabling yourself to not follow your own dreams. To each his own. You don't want to be a pro. I'm sure the corp. I'm sure the corporate life over there would love to take your dreams away from you. Nobody's going to be selfish for you. You got to be selfish for your own self. Because nobody's going to be selfish for you. Look at that old truck. <laughs> you know he was a trucker. That was his shadow career, trucking. And he was like. Oh, Jack Kerouac and the open road, all this type of stuff. But just a shadow career, another depression, another run away from a dream. Old school buses have been wrecked over there. Serve the muse. I mean, the muse is so powerful, there's even a band named after it. I mean, if this m mystical being doesn't exist, you know, I got faith. I don't need to see things. I don't, I mean, what? My my always thing, every time I want to quit on myself, I say, then what? What? Honestly, what? What is my out? What can I do? So who wants a book next? Uh, tell me. Tell me in the comments or whatever. I need to send this guy off to the, to the next reader. I think D-Man was talking about that too, you know. Books hitting you at the right time. I feel the same way with like YouTube videos. They'll show up in my recommended right when I need them. You know, when I was feeling really anxious, like a million videos about anxiety from people that I loved were feeling the same thing. I was feeling like really ashamed of being anxious or something. And everyone was like, no, we feel anxiety too. Here's what I did. Life's a painting when I make it a masterpiece. Huh. Peace in the web streets. What up?